Schwann, and this is the Royal Hangover. You just saw episode five, so we're at the mid-season point of the Royals this season, season three. And I'm thrilled tonight because I have two wonderful special guests. One you may know, one may, you may not. It's sort of a secret weapon. To my left, Mr. Stephen Coletti is here. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. A lot of people cheering. That's yeah. right, that's right. They love you, Stephen Coletti, as do they. And to my right is Lindsay Wolfington. She's the show's music supervisor. Yeah. comment section just put it right on the face page and Jeffrey is here of course Jeffrey who really never took to any nicknames this season so far but we're only at the midway point we there's a long way to go What's and I didn't even get clapped so there was oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. he says he doesn't have clap that was oh, okay, okay wow Exactly. Learned something today. Didn't even get clapped. Many other things. Oh, the Royals. You never know. I see some. I, I see a nickname. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, nice just put your comments. Put your questions. And if yes. they're music related, because we know we I, I personally get a lot of questions about music on the show. Lindsay's here, and she would love to answer those questions. Stephen, uh, I want to start with you because um, normally we have someone like an actor from the show. Um, sometimes we have somebody from outside the show, and I always like when we do because as a fan of the show uh -huh. you sort of straddle the line between the people who are watching this who have questions and you also have an insider perspective because of our relationship and because you're an actor in general yes so um you've been watching the show yes um in terms of tonight's episode well, I, ha well, I haven't been you know i don't it's like watching the show it, it's kind of like i have a bone to pick where it's like i don't want to watch the show because it's like he hires all british actors and there's american actors here and we're like wait a minute even australian ones <laughs> Well, but reluctantly, I watch a show, and then it turns out I like the show. Well, when, like ja that. when James was I here, I have to continue to watch it. You I want to boycott it, but I can't. You know, this episode was directed by Lafferty, James Lafferty, and written by Scarlett Lacey. Yeah. 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 How so, do we do? Do we call it a viral clap? Are you, or are how you, do we do like an internet clap? Is there a word? For this? No, they just they post hearts. Oh, hit the hearts. 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 James Lafferty. Um, hit the hearts. See, look. Oh, the hearts. There we go. All right, all right. So, uh, but when James was here, we asked him uh, if he had a British accent. Do you have a British accent? Oh, well, yeah, yes. Between me and my shower, and that's about it. We, Sometimes we, in my we car, don't get, depending on the song. We don't get to hear it? Well, you know, you got to taste it right You're now. You're the one who brought like an it up. You brought it up. I'm just saying. Let me prepare something. All right, well, so then we probably should. I know, I'm not going to fall for this trap, not right now, <laughs> not right now. I'm an actor, I need to prepare. Good, I'm going to segue into love triangles then. You good perfect, with that one? Perfect. All right. Get up uh, over there. I'm going to go back to drinking. <laughs> um, uh, the love triangles are strong in this episode. Obviously, um, we've been dealing with uh, Catherine, who's in the middle of two princes. Robert on one side, Liam on the other. So that's a big love triangle. And then in this episode, we saw the return of Beck. So Beck came back around just when things are going pretty good for Jasper and Eleanor. Not a fan of that Beck. No? no he brought he brought bacon. I want him to hit him in the face. Liam, like he tackled him, brought him back, was like the doors are closed now. Can we just fucking sock him in the face? But that's <laughs> but that's interesting to we me. Do a because viral sock in the face? Hit that. They don't have don't that. give him a heart. Yeah. Don't do that. But oh, if you okay. remember, Beck was so sweet to Eleanor in the Monaco <laughs> episode the um, from uh, from the past. And it leads me to this. Timing is everything with a relationship, right? Both people have to be in the same place at the same time because in the Monaco episode, Beck was really into her, and or she was really into him, and he was sort of still married and you know dealing oh, that. with that. Just that, <laughs> exactly. And he and he couldn't commit, but now he comes around. He's all interested. He's all flirty, but she seemingly has moved on to Jasper and has a really good thing with Jasper. So I, it only leads me to say. What do you think? Do you think Jasper and Eleanor is going to stick? Um, or do you think there's trouble ahead? Well, I hope they stick. See, it seems like they can't avoid trouble, though. I know. This, it's is kind like... of a, this, is, this is the sad part. I feel like Eleanor is like, she's really pushing for greener pastures. She's, I feel like she's like looking at the light at the end of the tunnel, like, I think we're approaching something that could be calm. And of course, Robert shows up, mm -hmm. and then there's more. And I think she's going to realize that, like, oh my God, I live in the palace. There's never going to be greener pastures. Like, I'm right. stuck in this for the rest of my life. It's like a. Uh, Sisyphean task. Rolling the rock up the hill, as soon as it gets to the top, it just rolls back to the bottom and she has to start again. This worries me for her because 
she's been doing pretty well, you know, managing a little bit of drama here and there. But if she continues to like, like if the relationship is on the rocks constantly, there's more things thrown her way. I feel like there's a major bender in her future. And by major bender, not one that's just a normal night for her on a Saturday night, but one that is that is is dangerous that she might not come out of. And so he's like, I'm concerned for her. Do you think the same, Lynn? Well, I I feel like I've been working in TV too long. I'm like, oh, episode one, they kind of reconciled. Episode five, we make out on the throne. Things are amazing. Like things can't last. Always right? good. Can't nice, last. nice throne. I want right? them together. Obviously, I hope they sex do. on the throne. I like them together. Do you guys yeah. like them together? Yeah. Jasper North. Jasper North. Let's do a poll, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, we love those. Well, I like to see the stuff streaming across the, 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 the uh, yeah. webcast. Um, here's our poll. When you're in a relationship, oh, this is a good one. Let's actually bring it back to this. If you're in a relationship like Liam, uh, Robert, Catherine, is it ever okay to b get involved with a friend or sibling's ex? Can you ever get involved with somebody? And like, by, like let's, say, let's say you're friends with someone, they break up, you have a spark. Okay. Is that okay or is there a code? If it's pull? okay, hearts. If it's not okay, mean, angry face. Oh. <laughs> All right. okay. What's happening? What's, yeah, your what's, take? Happening? what's your take it, on it, It should Lynn? be different. Yeah. I mean, I think... You, you, sometimes you can't help who you love, right? So I agree. The heart like, wants what it wants. Exactly. Like there is a code about things, but at the same time, there are only so many things you can help. I actually have a friend who married a girl who had previously dated one of his good friends, but he asked the friend before he asked her out. Okay, so he so tried to be above board. Yes, exactly. And they're married, have kids, and everything. As opposed to Liam and Catherine and Robert, who well, no, but like, nobody's talking to anybody. Yes, but it's not like he could be like, Robert. Hello, can I date your ex-girlfriend, you know? Well, uh, what, what do you think? Things need to be worked out a little bit. I feel <laughs> like it's either a meet up in a park and a punch for guys or girls. It's a long conversation, a few bottles of wine, but like, no. you know, like you said. <laughs> well, or is it, like is a it meet up in a park too? Sure. Oh, all right. I like the wine that. is no good right? to come from that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, it's possible, but you gotta, you gotta work it out. And I think it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, maybe if I put it off, like it'll be easier down the line. Just do it. Just <laughs> rip the bandaid off, have the conversation and, and then you move on. But, uh, you know, as, as long as I feel like, you know, time has passed. And again, if the heart is, is true and it's just, is not just some sort of a fling, you know, a flash in the pan, I think, uh. You got to go for it. That was a good segue. You said true, and Truman the cat came right through. I don't know if he made. I don't know if he made it on camera, but Truman. he's making. He's the sound guy's loving him because he's walking all over the gels, <laughs> and he's like digging. <laughs> Steven's going to get him. A, lo a lot of mixed reaction though. A oh, lot so, of people so it's okay. divided. Yes, no, we're seeing hearts and a lot like of angry faces. Like there should be a nice. Yeah, but a lot of people are rooting for Liam though. They want Liam to. Uh, to I thought to you were going to bring him with her. I agree. I'm kind of rooting for Liam, too. Well, it's interesting you say that. Hold on. Can't come in. Uh-oh. Yeah, the one thing uh -oh. Truman doesn't like is he doesn't like to be held. <laughs> this is a nice suit, by the way. He does, he, does like, he does like Stephen, but he doesn't Aww. usually like to be held. Aww. Stephen Coletti, winning love and breaking hearts. <laughs> the internet breaks because Stephen Coletti and Truman are, are bonded. Just give him a little scratch on the head. Man, this is already. boozy. Um, so anyway, um, it's very interesting. I, uh, just to finish the thought and then we'll move on. Um, I agree that, uh, I think that Catherine and Liam clearly have a connection. And in this episode, Catherine said, look, I don't want to be the one to like, she's deferring to Liam. She's saying, I don't want to ruin your relationship with your brother because of something we did when we thought he was dead. But I need you to be above board. I need you to take the lead and talk to your brother. And it puts her in a really weird position, but it's a, it's a position that I have to say I understand. She, she deferred to Liam and said, are you going to tell him? And so far he hasn't told him. So we, and, and, and I think it's an interesting distinction. We haven't seen them together romantically since Robert returned. Right, and so that's I think as honorable, honorable as you yeah. can be in that situation. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. And I know a guy, and I'm thinking next week we might see more about that. Interesting. <laughs> He's the you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> what was the um, what was the song that was playing when they were at the tree? 
Um, Do you uh, remember? It's a band called Hawks. I think I'm saying it right. And the okay. song is called Sister. We used another song by them earlier this season. Too. Great tree, really good. even better band. You know what, you know you what I want to do? You know what I want, I want to do, uh, and now I'm going to set the bar really high, Lynn. Um, I want to have a musical guest on the Royal Hangover before the end of the season. And Hawks is a contender. Yeah. Because he's a awesome. singer-songwriter. We could fit him in my living room. <laughs> so that would be good. Um, Jeffrey, what kind of questions? What's going on on the face page? To, to go into what you were saying, Tara wants to know, if you were in each of you, if you were in Catherine's position, who would you choose? Ooh, I get to choose one of the princes? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> well, uh, I don't know that much about Robert yet. Um, I, he seems like a savvy negotiator when he got Cyrus to commit to a privy council and he had a little spark in his eye with the queen. He seems like he could, uh, he may have, um, that we may not know everything we, we know uh, about Robert yet. Yeah, he seems like a great guy, but I have more history with Liam, so I'm just saying. I, I'm, you know. Wouldn't it be the opposite? What? Well, like he, Robert was kind of my first love, and I had just been with Liam for three weeks or whatever. Oh, no, I'm saying me personally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, as far as Catherine goes, I, I got to wait and see how it plays out. I don't know. Interesting, you're at it out. <laughs> no, no, I was just, I'm just saying. Um, I've spent more TV I'm, time with Liam. Yeah. That's all. I guess, I guess that's why my, my knee-jerk reaction is, is hashtag King Liam. Yeah. Definitely. But, um, but uh, you know, we, we don't know yet. Here's what's interesting about television. Uh, what you put in front of an audience, you could have uh, all kinds of history that the audience didn't see, <clears throat> i.e. Catherine and Robert. The audience didn't see them together. They didn't see how they were together and if he was kind to her and if they had a spark. They've not seen any of that. They've only seen the Liam side of things. Right. So you're going to lean the way, you know, to what you're familiar with, but we have to give it time to see what becomes yeah. of Robert and Catherine. They may be great together. We don't know yet. There's a great scene at the tree. Yeah, we, the exactly. Tree? Well, that's song? our first glimpse of that. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see. Um, let's, uh, uh, what else is going on? Do we have any poll yes. results? Oh, yeah. Um, that split? Everyone was split. Everyone, there was a lot of people saying that they would pick Liam, though. Le that okay. Liam's, Liam's nice. the, the big nice. winner for this. Right. Uh, they do want to know, uh, Ailey, I think is her name, uh, is saying, is Robert going to send Jasper away? A lot of people are nervous that Jasper is going to not meet up to Robert's standards and kind of just... Well, he's, it's interesting because uh, uh, I think in, in uh, last... I don't know anything. All right, we saw Come a little. On. We saw a little. Are you, no, Mark's you know, always, up to, always you, up to something. You, 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 you I better didn't say have anything. a good poker face, Liz. <laughs> because, you know, Mosley was here and he gave away spoilers. He's never been back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't never say been anything. Back. Um, uh, last week's episode, Jasper seemed to think that his meeting with Robert didn't go as well as Eleanor thought it went. So Jasper seemed to think that Robert was going to cause some trouble. Um, uh, but uh, again, we haven't seen Robert interact with many people yet. So we don't know which way, how these relationships are. We know that he's good with Eleanor. We heard that he was good with Eleanor from like day one, but it's hard to say. Rebecca says she loves the music. What's your process in selecting the music? And how do you have a Why dream? Rebecca got to ask my question? <laughs> oh, <sorry>. Jeez, Rebecca, <laughs> stand down. I mean, come on. No, that's a, it's a great, I was going to ask you the same thing. Do you, do you guys have a dream band or a song for the series? That's oh. really hard, don't you think? I, well, it, you know, we, oh. we, you know, last year I knew season three was coming back in January. So I was able to start listening for music for it for like six months before we even shot anything. So, you know, songs like Tonight Sparrow and Princess yeah, you had, and King. Right, how great and is that? And last, last week we had the song Oh Brother. Like these are the songs I'm like, they're perfect, they're amazing, yeah. if they fit the right scene. A lot of the times you have like a song that says exactly what you, you know, your show would say, but you never get that scene um, to actually put it in where it works, so. Is that um, how it works in your office? Like a song comes along and it's it's princess and it plays and you do you run out to your like intern and go it's perfect. <laughs> Sometimes actually King you know was one of those that um, I came across and I actually sent to the promo department at E because it felt like a promo song. I didn't know if we'd ever have like an upbeat moment for it. Right. Um, so that happened very naturally kind of after the point but as music supervisor what is the process are you talking to every label in town are you talking to independent artists do they know how to find you like how's it all work yeah so i'm on every major label and publishers uh mailing list and radar and you know they know what i'm working on they know i'm working on the royals now that we've been on a couple seasons they know what this it's show a little sounds easier. like yeah. you know 
if there's a new London grammar song, they send it to me, things like that. You know, bands we've given and there is. to. Yeah, there is. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I work with a lot of people who represent indie artists because we always need uh, good indie music on the show. Like Hawks is a great indie artist who actually just got signed. But mm -hmm. when we uh, picked the song for the episode, um, you know, he was still indie. Uh, and I always, Mark and I have always loved like finding the next up and coming artist, which is really fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's my favorite part of the show, I think, when we find the, that perfect song yeah. that really makes a scene come alive. And it's interesting how if you play a song that's too slow for a scene, the scene is painful to watch. And if you play a song that's too fast, it seems like everyone, you're missing a lot of emotion. And, and it's the same scene. The scene's already been cut yeah. together. You're just trying different music, and then you find that right song. And it, sometimes we'll just place a song, and it'll score what's already been cut. Yeah, I you actually, know? I think this episode is a good example of that, because I think I emailed you Princess by Max mm -hmm. Jury like a week before this was in editing. And so don't eat that. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh he's eating God, tape. He's the so cat funny. is eating tape. <laughs> okay, now yeah, it's become a toy. It. Sorry, Lindsay. No, it's okay. <laughs> and then the, song, the Charlotte O.C. song that we actually used in the surveillance room with Jasper doubting his relationship with Eleanor uh, was something else initially. Steve, and I was that. like, we got to do better. I don't even remember what it was. Meredith but... actually asked the question. She said that she loved that song. It oh, said good. Flight of the Sparrow. Is that oh, right? Sparrow is the song at the end oh, okay. by Tom O'Dell, who is okay. awesome. Yes. And he actually has another song called Daddy, which I really wanted to use this season, but we never had the right scene for it. Yeah, we never had. Obviously. Any... All the fathers were gone. Right. <laughs> um, um, well, listen, uh, you do a great job, Linz. I, a lot of the fans know that we you did One Tree Hill together for a long time, for you know almost 10 years. Um, and it's been a pleasure, and you always do such a great job. So I think viral applause. Viral lots, applause. I think oh, hearts, 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 hearts. <laughs> On, online hearts. Online Yay! hearts. Send them. Thumbs hearts, up. Thumbs hearts, up. Hearts, hearts I don't Lindsay. see them yet. <laughs> exactly. You put, yeah. Um, uh, listen, um, should we call my mom and see what's going on? Yeah. All right. I look forward to there my mom's. Uh, oh, hearts coming in, you guys. There's the Lindsay heart. Oh, yay. Yes. How good Thank is that? you. That's awesome. I think Truman needs his own web series, right? Yeah. He's really a damn entertaining, isn't Look he? Look at that tail. He's thinking about something. All right. Let's hope Mom, she's home. Mom on speed dial. Let's hope she's home. <laughs> Good son. <laughs> now you're going to throw under the bus. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mom. It's your son, Mark. Hi, Marky. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you, Mom? I'm great. Am I doing my announcer voice? No, no, not tonight. Okay, good. Hi, Mr. Schwann. Steven's here. Hi, Steven. Hey, how are ya? I'm good. How are you? I miss you. Aww. And your cookies. Okay. And Pontiac, Illinois. Shout out to Illinois. Hey, how did you like the program tonight? It was good, wasn't it? Very impressed. Directed by James Lafferty. That's right. Was it? Yeah. That's right. What a hunk. Oh, it was really good. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, Scarlett Lacey wrote it. Scarlett's here. Yes. And, <laughs> and Lindsay Wolfington, who does the music. Lindsay did the music with me at One Tree Hill, too, Mom. She's here as well. Hello. Well, you guys did a great job. It was very good tonight. There you go. Thank you. Now, uh, what do you think, Mom? We got a lot of love triangles going on. What's what? Oh, yes, but I really like it. I do like that Beck. No, you don't like Beck? No, he's a troublemaker, and I just know he's going to do something next week. Yeah, oh. he's a real dick, right? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, he, does, he, he caused a bit of trouble in this episode, for sure. Yeah. Um, even though he apologized at the end, it may have been a false apology. We'll have to I wait and see. I think it was, Mark. You know it was. You never know. <laughs> how, about, how about Liam and, and, and Robert and Catherine? What do you think about that? You know what? Liam looks so young next to Robert now. Yeah. It's Doesn't a, he? I it, mean, Robert look, has such a presence about him, and Liam just looked so much younger, but I like him and Cap together. Well, um, <laughs> it's interesting you say that, Mom, because uh, for the first two seasons we hadn't met Robert, and Liam seemed like he would make a really great king. Right. And, and maybe he still does, but now that you meet Robert and you meet this guy who was groomed to be the next king, right. it kind of colors Liam in a different light, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It makes him look a lot younger. Yeah, yeah. And you see why the struggle was so much bigger for him when he was thrust into that spotlight. 
Absolutely. Well, um, I'm glad you're watching, Mom, and I'm glad you're liking it. You got any, uh, any, anything for Stephen? Any questions for Stephen? You want to know what he's wearing? What do you got on, Stephen? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Mark told me this was a Golden Globes party. Uh, <laughs> so I'm in a suit, uh, but I, I did come up on a, on a Royal Swag sweatshirt. You know what so. he's wearing? He's wearing his Royals hoodie like the one you have, the soft one that you love. Oh, I love that one. It's very comfy, and it's covered in Truman hair. Yeah. Oh, I'll bet. He had, oh. Truman was sitting on his lap for a while. I know you don't have the, the show up because you're pacing worried about your phone call. <laughs> but um, But uh, when you watch it, uh, you'll see that Stephen's rocking the Royals cast and crew hoodie tonight. Good for him. That's good. <laughs> well, Mom, it's always, Mom, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You always have interesting things to say. And I love you and I appreciate you watching. Can we talk again next week? Absolutely, Marky. Love you back. I love you, too. Next week is our Christmas episode. You're going to love it. Oh, I know. I can't wait. All right. We'll talk to you then, Mom. Love you. Bye. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, yay! Yay. yay! Give it up for Mom. She, it's for Mom. She gets, she gets very nervous about the call. I would I, I tell if I were her, she, her. I tell her she does a great job, but I think that she gets nervous about it. Sometimes. Jeffrey, what questions have we been avoiding online? Stephen has a question for Stephen. Oh. Best Mark story. Oh. Your best Mark oh. story. Oh. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> best Mark That's story. That's safe for Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> best Mark story, not from Vegas. Well, yes. <laughs> Stays there. Man, what is a good Mark story? Save for Facebook Live. Mark's the one with all the stories. Yeah, I know. Help me out here. I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm trying to think. Uh, um, well, what the about files. I'm what, what, about, what about that one? Oh, uh, that's a good one. Pull that picture off the wall. Oh, Bring it over uh, here. Let's see if I can. We, get uh, it. He took me to a um, um, Chicago Bears game uh, in Chicago. And I, was, I always wanted to go to um, like a football game in the middle of winter, tailgating, you know, snow on the ground and all that from California. So this is new to me. Sure enough, we go. It's negative nine degrees. <laughs> Wind chill. I've got so many freaking layers on. It didn't do crap. I was still freezing. I took my hand warmers, wound up putting them in my boots. And Mark just has a sweater on. And <laughs> but here's why. Here's why. That is the coat that fans of One Tree Hill will recognize as the coat that Skills wore to Utah. Oh, and, yeah. got, and got into all the clubs. And I was wearing it. But just like on the episode in One Tree Hill, that coat is famous. And whoever wears it gets all the love. So and Stephen warmth. wore it. <laughs> and the world loves Stephen anyway. But they really loved him in the coat. And it was so cold that night that I put a beer in the little cup holder at the seat. And it frosted over. Oh my God. It yeah, literally you, turned to slush. You'd knock the top of your beard, break oh. through, drink a sip, and then put it down, and then go to drink another sip, and you'd be frozen over again. That was and, I, and I was sitting in my seat like, oh my God, like, be careful what you wish for. This is actually, this is not fun. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting hypothermia watching a football game. I didn't, I, yeah, I feel very Californian at this moment. The, but, next, um, uh, the next time the Bears were on Monday Night oh, Football. Oh, wallet from that trip. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. I lost my wallet. That is worth <laughs> conveniently. That is worth telling. He brings me out to to Chicago, and he's like, "Yeah, come on out." He's like, "You know what? Like, just you can stay at my place. It's all worth you know, Just get. The, I got the tickets. You know all this. I lose my wallet as soon as I get there." And we, we actually used to drive around Chicago, where he's from. We're kicking leaves on the ground. We're now, checking drive throughs of McDonald's. Also, like, also is that a sponsor I, of E, by the way. Nah, also, yeah. you gave a shout out to Pontiac, Illinois. I'm okay. from a small town. The entire town found out that Stephen had lost his wallet. <laughs> Everybody's you looking out the street. Yeah. Everyone's kicking leaves in the curb. Right, and, on the, like, the and everyone's like, we would go through town and people were like, hey, did you find your wallet? They're just asking Stephen. We eventually so, gave up and then we're going to return the car after finished. five days. The trip's oh. over. We're going back to the airport. He covered everything. It was awesome. Uh, I, I, get, I get to the airport. He's like, hey, can you get the uh, papers out of the glove box for the rental car? I'm like, sure, no problem. I go in there, and there's my wallet. In the wow. glove box. Wow. Oh, my gosh, my driver's oh, license. Which you needed everything. to fly anyway. Yeah, so. we were going to see what we could do there. It was going to be a mess. But anyways, uh, after, I still had After five days. He didn't days. accept the money. He wouldn't accept anything. <laughs> they just got a great picture of me flipping <laughs> off my wallet in the glove box. Because <laughs> it was the wallet's fault. And then when he says to me, he's like, you know what, man? That wasn't one of our better trips. <laughs> maybe, maybe the next time. <laughs> That's right. Still, it's still a it's good time. It's true. It's true. But it, yeah, five days. Searched everywhere for the wallet, but not in the glove compartment of the car. <laughs> oh, well. 
Um, but also, Stevens Weld is really just a rubber band around a bunch of money and credit cards. That's true. It's not <laughs> what he calls right a wallet. I actually lost um, it. Have you guys seen my wallet? What else wallet? would they like to know? <laughs> Rachel wants to know, was Beck always that much of a snob? He seemed to like actually really care for Eleanor. Like in previous when we previously saw him. Let's well, call for that. You know, it's, it's I don't want. I to. think what's interesting about that is I think that Beck is a good guy, but you, you have to understand we met Beck in Eleanor's life when Eleanor was interested in him, and now Beck comes back and suddenly she's interested in someone else, and then we start to see his sort of, you know, that that uh, that caste system, if you will, you know, where he sort of implies to Jasper, know your station. You know, I think that I think that you know somebody who's a bit spurned, or a bit competitive, those colors started to come out more in Beck, and he did apologize. But yeah, that was a nasty. How great side was of Beck. Uh, Eleanor's line when she knocks all of his uh, his yeah. medals off? What was it? Have some grace, bitch. What was that? <laughs> or asshole? <laughs> How, yeah. Show. Excuse me. It was show some grace, asshole. <laughs> That's so <right>. good. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, I remember uh, Scarlett had scripted the medals. And scripted some patches and things. What else did rib, what else did they give? Yeah. Insignias and things. And I was like, but those won't. They're not going to be satisfying when she throws them off the tray. So then we had to put more medals on there. But Scarlett was she was uh, watching that scene like a hawk, <laughs> and it turned out great. Scarlett, well done. <laughs> Attention to detail. That's right. What so, else? Uh, the, she, uh, Liza wants to know, is Jaspernor too good to be true? And a lot of people are saying they liked the Jaspernor call-out, like verbal call-out from Eleanor in the episode. Yay. They like got to finally, you know, their, their shipping name. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I remember when it was scripted, it was fun. We liked it. Um, when you hear it out loud, I'm like, would they? I, apparently those two used that Jaspernor. Oh. I know it's a call-out to the fans, and it's nice to give them a little gift. But um, they wouldn't have seen it in print anywhere because nobody knows about Jasper, nor are they meant to know about Jasper. So that p clearly is something that that couple uses. That's... So well done, loyals. <laughs> um, what else is up? Hey, um, uh, before we get to that, I wanted to ask you, um, is there a favorite musical moment that you have uh, from this season or from the show in general? I mean, I actually really love... The princess moment from this episode, the princess song. Um, you mean the sex scene? The, on the sex throne. scene on the throne. But I just, I mean, which isn't, you know, my favorite of all three seasons. But I just felt like it's sweet and romantic and sexy all that at the same solo time. That solo came in right. Totally, on, it has like the like, right on the sexy. like porn guitar happening. That's right. Um, <laughs> um, and I also, I mean, I, I. For me, I love when we like hit the nail on the head, like using Sparrow at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, la you know, last season, I feel like one of my favorite moments was the banner song at the end of season two, which was recorded just for the show and was a lot of work to pull off. And yeah. so I feel I, sometimes I like uses because a lot of work went into them too and That's passion. So good. But yeah. and and Banner's writes he writes great stuff he's and awesome. he's and he's a nice guy. He. Um, he stepped up and wrote that song for us last season. Uh, he recorded under, that song uh, re for us. Recorded yeah. that song for us um, under, um, it, was, it was a ticking clock. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this season, uh, he did um, uh, Holy Ground, right? Yeah, literally oh. that was like, the label said, hey, we have a brand new song from Banners. And Mark was like, hey, do we have any other songs to consider for the end montage? Yeah. Like, Here you yeah, go. Yeah, he writes great songs. I feel like, I don't know if this is a backhanded compliment or not, but... He writes the songs Coldplay used to write. Like, he writes great stuff. Yeah. And, like, really sweeping, soulful, poetic stuff. He's really talented. I like that guy a lot. And that was a great placement, too. Really good. Um, anything else before we wrap up? People are obsessed with Jasper. What's happening with Jasper and oh, Eleanor? What's, can you tease us anything? Like, is it going to be all sunshine and rainbows from now on? Well, here's the thing. Next week is, uh, uh, I know everyone's done with Christmas. But they're just having Christmas in the palace. Um, so, so, so next week is uh, is a Christmas episode uh, for us, and it's one of my favorite episodes of the season. Um, that musical little fantasy number, that sequence that everyone has seen of with um, Alex singing Winter Wonderland, yeah. which was also an undertaking with you and Sid and, and everything, and Alex really singing that. Um, that's in next week's episode, and there's um, there's it's a big Jasper episode. So uh, my answer to that would be uh, next week you're going to get a lot more clarity. Juicy, juicy, juicy. That. Yeah. 
Well, listen, yes. um, this has been wonderful. Stephen, thanks for stopping no, by. Thank um, you, you for you having gotta, me. You got to come by again sometime. Sure, if we do, uh, all right. Well, I'll let you, sound, I'll let you sound No, I'm about good. That. You need to think about how this went. You're like, let, let's let's review Coletti real quick. <laughs> you guys like Steven tonight? Yeah. 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 Right. Sending hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you hearts, something. Hearts, hearts. No other guest has had Truman on their lap. You get so many points for that. What are you talking about? Thank you guys for um, sitting through this with me. You're always <laughs> welcome back. And Lindsay, uh, it's been a pleasure for like almost 15 years I know. now. Thanks well for done. having I'm me. I'm proud of you. You're doing good. Thanks, man. You're doing good. Man. I love what she does. You guys should follow her on Twitter. You put music up on Twitter a little bit? What? Do you put music up on Twitter? Every mm -hmm. once in a while. I need to be better about it. I'll be better about it if you oh, follow sure. me. And before we go, um, you, uh, we have a Spotify page, right? Yes. Yeah. Spotify playlist of everything used in every season of the Royals. Everything yeah. that's on Spotify. Like the Charlotte OC song that was used tonight is not out yet. But in March it will be. All you'd have to do is search for the Royals and it pops up, yeah. Yeah. That's right. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I get so many comments about the music on the show. It's all right there on Spotify. Just uh, go and subscribe and you'll get every... Every week, if the music's available, it'll be on the Spotify. Um, if you want to keep talking about the Royals, and we love it when you do, you can talk on all the social media stuff. There's the Face page. There's the Insta pic. Uh, there's the, there's the, uh, uh, the, Instagram? The, the Twitter, the Insta pic, right? Snapchat. And the Snap and Chat. All that stuff you guys can talk about. All the stuff I don't have. Um, you can talk about the show. Uh, please do. We'll be back next week, episode six. It's a great episode. You're going to love it. It's one of my it's favorites. Really and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.